So we're going to look at an example with Gauss's law, specifically the infinite thin wire. So uh, I give you an infinite thin wire. Uh, it has some charge density lambda, that's linear charge density, and uh, you can see the wire in blue. And I ask, what is the electric field some distance r away from this wire? So we can use Gauss's law to solve this problem quite simply, and we can start off with a cylindrical Gaussian surface, which I've drawn in there. It has some radius r, has some length l. And so now let's just jump right into Gauss's law. So I start off, e dot dA is equal to q enclosed over epsilon naught. Let's analyze the left-hand side. Uh, e dot dA is the flux, and we're looking for the closed integral, or the flux through the entire surface. So that means I'm looking for the flux through the top, which I've labeled, flux through the bottom, and flux through the side. Uh, and you can see that on my diagram. And all of that equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now if I look at each of those pieces separately, I notice that the flux through the top and the flux through the bottom are both zero. And so I'm left with uh, the flux through the side is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now why is that? Let's zoom in on just the top face. And let's look at two little pieces of charge along this infinite charged wire. And I, you can see those in red. Now each of those are going to give off some amount of electric field, but we notice that because they're equally spaced on either side, the horizontal components are going to cancel and we're only going to have a vertical component of the electric field. So the horizontal electric field goes away and therefore there's no flux going out through the top or the bottom pieces. And for every little piece of charge on one side of that uh, top part, there's an equal corresponding piece on the other side of that top part. And you can repeat this process for the bottom uh, side of the cylinder as well. Now once we figure that out, the rest of the problem is actually quite straightforward. So we uh, say that the electric field E uh, times 2 pi r L, which is the area of that side face, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. I notice that Q enclosed is just my charge density, lambda, times the length, L, divided by epsilon naught. And that's good, the L's cancel, and I'm left with E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught R, or E is equal to 2K lambda divided by R. So just a couple final thoughts. First off, Gauss's law is not just for spheres. Uh, certainly we can use it with spherical symmetry, but we've also seen we can use it with cylindrical symmetry. And in fact, if you can find a nice symmetry in the problem, you can use it in a variety of cases. Um, and lastly, I want you to take the time to verify that the units in that final expression work out. Uh, you might have noticed that there's only 1 over r in the denominator. Uh, so where did that other r go that we've seen in all the other expressions for electric field? I'll give you a hint. If you look in the numerator, uh, you'll find that there's a little hidden r in one of the variables.